Greetings, perverts, and welcome to this episode of The Smart Files. I am the Artie Dance, and in this episode, we're going to look at the Philippine uh, horror thriller from 2023 called Bulla, which translates to the word bubble. Um, I'm a bit late to the party with this film. It came out a few months ago, but I finally got a chance to watch it last night, and I thought, well, this is going to be a great candidate for The Smart Files. Um, I'm also going to do this with our script. I'm going to go completely off head. So if this video goes completely off tangent, um, that's just the nature of, of the way my head's working right now. So let's get started. Firstly, I'd be really loath to call this a smutty movie because it's quite erotic and it's not sleazy in a way. I mean, it depends. It, it's pervy because you, you get constant nudity all throughout. Like the, the main chick is probably spends most of her time naked than in clothes and quite a lot of other actresses in the film also take off their gear throughout the film. But the movie does, uh, you know, ensure that it keeps up its uh, thriller and horror stakes. So firstly, before we get into the film, let's check out what the movie's about. I've got a synopsis already pre-prepared for this one. Melody works in a small laundry where she takes certain outfits home, such as schoolgirl uniforms and doctor scrubs, where she dresses up and attempts to have sex with a man she keeps captive. She also moonlights as a vigilante, killing men who have wronged women. One day, she meets a handsome police officer and decides she wants him. She stalks his girlfriend and uncovers a few secrets about her that she can use to her advantage. But Melody doesn't do things by halves. When she sets her mind to something, she goes all the way. She really does go all the way in this film. And I think the director uh, made her go all the way in this film, the poor actress, uh, who seems to have a great job uh, with the role that she's got in the film. Now, there are a couple of, of, of things in this movie that really make you go, you know, WTF is going on in this film. It is clear from the start that our main character, Meldy, she's a bit of a nut job um, because we see her trying to get this man who seems to be invalid or handicapped um she tries to get him to have sex with her and he's just not budging either it's not working or he's just refusing to play along with her and we see later on in the film why i mean thankfully the movie does put all of the the parts of it together so that we can fully understand what's going on in this chick's head and why she does the things she does She's a maid. Um, her character is actually a maid. And we see that in a few flashbacks that she is a maid, a housekeeper. And uh, she gets uh, asked to be uh, a maid throughout the film too. One of the characters uh, needs her house cleaned and she quickly volunteers to be a maid. And we see through some flashbacks of the, ha of the family that she used to be a maid for that she was exposed to some incest. So the father was molesting the daughter and she could see all this. And rather than wanting to help the daughter, in her head, she wanted to be the daughter and be molested, uh, which sounds twisted in itself, right? But that's just what it is about. And so this guy that she keeps captive, oh, spoiler coming up. This guy that she keeps captive is the, the dude um, from the start of the movie. For, well, not from the start of the movie. This is the dude um, that she used to work for. And this guy has a bit of a obsession with his daughter dressing up in costumes. So that's why she keeps stealing different types of costumes from the laundrette and taking them home. I've, I've got a lot of issues with the, the way the movie plays out its certain plot points. Like for example, people drop off their laundry and like I don't expect them to get their laundry back the same day. But she, from the looks of it, she seems to clean them, then take them home then have sex in those and then bring them back the next day and clean them again. At least that's why I'm assuming she's doing. It just it seems a little bit unbelievable. Also, the whole movie happens in its, its own little world. She, like, she kills a lot of people in this film to the point where the police start looking for a serial killer, which is her. And for some reason, they can never pinpoint her as the killer, which is completely unbelievable because it, at no stage does she ever even really try to hide the fact that she's killing people or how she kills the people. It's really... Um, really really obvious that she is just she's killing these people and she's leaving behind a lot of evidence as i suppose that's the charm of the film it's the charm with all films right you take your brain out and put it in a jar and then you put your cinema sins idea away because you're not here to ding everything in the movie you're here to just watch the movie and go well that doesn't make sense but i'll just keep watching 
So for example, we meet a police officer character. He's a bit of a, an idiot. She says, hello, officer. How did you know I'm an officer? Well, you're standing there in your fucking uniform. So that's how she knows you're an officer. And she says that to him. Well, you're in your uniform. even has got his name on the uniform. So she calls him by his name as well. He's a bit of a dumb character, this guy. And I also don't understand why he keeps his uniform on all throughout the film. He goes out to dinner with his girlfriend. He keeps his uniform on. He goes to visit Meldy on a date. Keeps his uniform on. Why? It's, it's like... um. The Simpsons, or any cartoon that you watch, that regardless of the scenario, they're always wearing the same clothes. There's only very certain situations, like for example in The Simpsons, when they go to church and they're all dressed up in their suits. It's really the only time they have a different costumes. But otherwise, you know, they're always wearing the same clothes. And that's what I feel this character of the police officer was doing in this film. He's always wearing the same clothes, which kind of makes no sense. In regards to smutty content, which is what I know what you're here for, but this movie is just, it's full of it all the way through. And this chick is, is very good looking. Don't get me wrong. And, and she is beautiful. And she just, uh, she doesn't need an excuse to just strip off. Like, boom, two seconds later, she's completely butt naked. Um, and a couple of other the actresses do show off uh, their assets as well, but they're nowhere near as good looking as uh, our main character, Meldy. And, and like I said, there's quite a few scenes. And this chick just, at the drop of a hat, will just start masturbating for no reason. Just standing around in the laundry. Oh, just slip your hand in. Then, in fact, there's a flashback scene where the girl, the daughter, is telling her what's happening to her. And while she's telling her, about the abuse that she's suffering, she's standing behind her, up against the, the washing machine, masturbating. She's crazy. She's a twisted, crazy woman. And that's why, yeah, okay, you're gonna think it's smutty, but, and and I am putting it here in the smut files, and it's coming up in the smut files against a lot of like so sleazy Hong Kong and Japanese movies that I've already looked at, but I don't really consider this to be sleazy like them, or smutty like them. This is, this is, it is more erotic like basic instinct rather than you know full on smutty like my horny girlfriend or sexy soccer that other movies that we've looked at in this series on top of all of the sex in the movie and it's, it's really it's really pervasive uh, you know you need four hands to count all the different scenes there are some really creative kills in the movie too so there's one where she kills a guy in the taxi, which is kind of basic, pretty crap, all right? But there are two more that are quite clever. Um, one of them, she is visiting a backyard abortionist who's performed an abortion on one of her clients, the schoolgirl. And subsequently, the schoolgirl has died due to bleeding, excessive bleeding or blood loss. So she goes to visit him and starts asking him questions. And while this guy has his head between her legs, she lifts up the sheet, grabs acid, and just throws it all over him. Now, part of me is thinking, well, thinking two things at this point. One, that's cool. Like, that is a cool kill. But how is she ensuring that none of this acid is spraying all over herself? Like, it, it's, it, this is what I mean by the movies in its own little bubble, world of bubble, that, um, you know, it can make sure that our main character is virtually indestructible and undetectable. There's another kill later on where she is stalking down the agent and the model and i don't know how to tastefully say this but essentially the agent is lying naked on a couch and she grabs the model's head pours acid into her mouth i think grabs her head puts it over the top of his dick <laughs> so that it looks like She's giving him a blowjob. But the acid's coming all out of her mouth and melting the guy's dick away. <laughs> like, thinking back at it, it's such a twisted kill. It is hilarious. You don't obviously don't get to see it. It's, it's all framed in such a way that everything happens off camera. But you know what's going on. And it is so clever and so ridiculously twisted which is again why i don't think this is a smutty or a sleazy film but it's just more of a, a psychotic erotic horror thriller and these are the scenes of horror the way that she stalks and kills people 
and make sure that she gets away with her crime. There's, a, there's another cr uh, scene at the end where she hallucinates uh, who someone is and just brutally, brutally kills them. Um, she drowns them. And again, that, that's probably not remarkable in itself, but it just goes to show the psyche of her character. She just turns really quickly. She looks sweet and innocent, but she's truly a psychotic character. That is Meldy. The film is called Bulla. It's a Philippine movie. It comes courtesy of Viva Max. They did a film recently called Live Scream, which is another uh, erotic horror movie. Um, this one's far more extreme than Live Scream. And, uh, and by extension, it's a better film. I think a lot of people are not going to like the f this film because of all of the sexual content. They'll just think it's just a stupid little movie. But really, look past all that, and you've got a really kind of clever film with a femme fatale style character. Think of, of Kathy Bates style character from Misery or a single white female type character or a basic instinct type character. So you've got a strong female, sexual female femme fatale who gets away with murders because she she does. And that's what makes the film so good. She gets away with everything by the end. And it doesn't kind of doesn't make sense because the kinds of people that she's killing. So for example, the the man that she kills that's an invalid in her house is a doctor he, it's the kind of person that you think well there's no way that she could kill him and get away with it because there'd be a lot of people looking out for him but and for some reason she does and that's what i mean this movie's in its own little bubble and she can do whatever she wants and gets away with it um and if you can look past that what you get is a kind of fun film but it is full of plot holes and it is full of of you know WTF moments that kind of don't make sense but that's not what you that's not why you watch movies you watch movies because you enjoy them you watch movies for the crazy stuff like this and this certainly is one of the craziest films we've gotten this year in 2023 so that's Bulla Philippines if you've seen it what did you think of it um, I would be very curious to know what people's opinions are of the film because I know the erotic horror thriller is not the in thing right now. People don't really like those types of movies, um, the kind of world that we have right now. So it's kind of still refreshing to see that they're getting made. Uh, otherwise, like and subscribe and all that other crap that YouTube is telling you to do. I've been the Hardy Dance. You've been watching another episode of The Smart Files, which I really hope you enjoyed. I will catch you next time either here or over on my new channel channel called shock mania link is in the end or somewhere else on the page shock mania is the other channel you want to look for thank you and catch you next time